Today I'm going to be doing my review of the Steyr AUG. It's about 2,000 rounds in and I just wanted to go ahead and kind of talk about uh, how it develops as you shoot more and how the performance changes. So first off, you know, I want to touch on, on some myths and theories that people put out there that most of them don't have experience where they used some other platform and they think that this one's going to uh, work the same. Well, first off, the problem that I see is a lot of people talk about sling mount systems and how this part may come out or whatever, and that is, I, I have not seen much of any reports of that happening. It is really hard to actually uh, get this pin out without you know, actually pushing in on the proper area, and it is not even flush, it is actually recessed into the butt plate in this little dimpled area and it, it's just a, a problem that I see and another thing if you want to feel good about it and prevent it have this set up have it on the other side so when you're you know going down it's got to pull out and you know away instead of having it on this side where it's just going to be pulling away or trying to come right out basically this way it's pushing up and this way so you know that's just a, a theory people have and it's kind of toxic to the reality of the situation and the next thing is it, it is hard to uh, get good slings for this and I found that the Vickers sling actually works really well it's very uh, stiff well it's not really stiff but it's kind of like the military web belt in a miniaturized version so it, it can be pretty rigid which is nice it makes it very durable and it does stay out of the way uh, during reloads and it does not typically go over the barrel and threaten to burn the sling or singe it I, that has not been a problem for me during the whole time I've used it I've seen a lot of people using very floppy and very flimsy uh, and thin slings with this rifle and then they get a little bit of a singe so next thing I want to talk about is the trigger on the the AUG here now right out of the box you know I never really had a problem with the trigger it was a little bit heavy but basically it has no slop to it at all and when you pull the trigger it's a crisp break so it really doesn't make any sense to trash it for that and there's also the issue that being a NATO version, a lot of people talk about how you can't quickly reload it because of the bolt re release system. But for me, it, it's not really that big of a deal because I developed, if you saw in another video, if you have a sling on, you know, even if it's even if it's tight on there, basically if you have a sling on, go up and uh, closer to the weapon and push with the back of your hand or your wrist and hook your pinky on there, you can just use the pinky, yank it back, and then flip it up. And this is where the optic actually comes in handy, because with the optic, it's not going to obstruct it or anything like that, and you don't need to just sit there and charge the weapon. It's not really that hard to lock it back, and then when you insert a fresh magazine, just sitting there and you know using your index or thumb, to flick it home. That's the most reliable way to really reload this rifle. And the next thing that I want to talk about is, you know, this system does have a gas system to it. It has a little short stroke piston system and a lot of people complain that, oh well, you know, it, it kind of short strokes if you're using like steel case or 223 ammo. Yeah, it, it can at first because these springs are incredibly tight. But if you open up the gas system all the way, not only is your ejection right off the bat going to be reliable and it's going to feed reliably and all that other stuff, but also it helps wear the spring a, a little bit and kind of make it easier. So you can actually flip it back to the you know non-adverse conditions, basically the standard setting. And the thing you got to realize about this rifle, just like the Tavor, it was actually designed for 5.56 NATO and 55 grain because of the barrel length. And here's the thing, a lot of people say, well, it doesn't balance or it doesn't, uh, you know, reliably uh, stabilize the 62 grain. That's BS. Number one, 
you know, the reliable ranges for that is 200, maybe 200 yards, but the, you know, tumbling effect that we want out of the 556 is not really reliable past about 100, 150 yards or meters, but, you know, typically this is a weapon for 200, maybe 300 yard engagements, even though you can take it past that, and that's when it becomes unreliable, but, you know, even, even then, it's basically its terminal effectiveness goes away from there so if you just want to touch your target that's fine but with that 55 grain is your best bet number one terminally and number two performance wise for this rifle so I can't really hold it against it and I don't see anybody with a reasonable case on why they would hold it against it as well so you know there you go that's my opinion on that the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that you know, this has a cross bolt safety, and it's not really a cross bolt, it's just a crossing over safety. And a lot of people talk about how it, it rubs them raw or whatever when it's on safe. Well, you know, you can have your finger up and basically this part right here just resting on the safety. And when you need to use it, it you basically put pressure on it on your way to the trigger. And the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that this rifle has pretty low recoil compared to even the Tavor in my experience and I think that has a lot to do with the muzzle brake being the tulip design it basically pushes the muzzle forward and down but not so much down because you do have some ports but it equally distributes it and it more pushes it forward which will naturally push it down plus with the bolt going back forward it'll give you a little bit of assistance there not much because it's not really at the center of balance or, or forward of that but in general this does not really have that much recoil plus the buffer systems behind the uh, recoil springs and the little rods that guide them you know the, there's polymer buffers to prevent that now the next thing I want to talk about is the trigger pack and the big thing with the trigger pack is it is made of polymer, but I've stated before that the polymer is very strong and a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's better to have metal parts. No, it's actually not because the polymer will actually wear a lot better and it's not going to chip. It's, you know, really, it, it's not as flexible as a lot of people uh, say, but it's more of a thermoset than it is a thermo, uh, you know, a thermoplastic. And I don't really see it giving me a problem. In, the funny thing is that with all the times that I dry fired it and shot it, it actually does not even have a dimple where it's actually struck the back of the firing pin. So the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, the controversy a lot of people have with the fact that, you know, if you're going to be shooting, you know, over here, you know, you'll get brass to the face. Of course you will. But I think that is more of the tactical, you know, climate you know, basically manifesting itself and creeping into the comment section. And it doesn't really have a base in, in reality, because typically what you're going to do when you're trying to be quick, it's not sitting there and trying to switch over. You might just peer out like this and lean. It, it doesn't really make sense to use that as much of an argument. So, of course, you want to keep a low profile, but there's some cases where you can't do that and you're going to be exposed on your left anyways you know a lot of the times and uh, personally I don't see that as a real issue so you know this whole idea of shooting on your left shoulder isn't going to be good or left hand shooters can't shoot you know whatever I I, I don't really see that as a, a real reliable argument except in the NATO uh, if you're uh, shooting the NATO it does not come with left hand friendly but most of the people don't really have that issue and typically they're cross-eyed dominant when uh, with the left-handed uh, shooters they typically can train themselves to be uh, use be right eye dominant and shoot with the right shoulder so anyways that's not really something I can hold against it so now we're on our last subject, and this is going to be a discussion of durability. Now, with the Styrog, I noticed that it is much more durable than the Tavor. I actually broke parts on the Tavor, 
uh, that the uh, the spring that gives the bolt tension and pushes it forward that actually broke on me and I didn't really notice it it was still reliable I didn't even notice it until I decided to break down the bolt so I had no idea when it actually broke so with that the Styrog has actually proven to be more reliable and countries still love it i.e. the Australians, the Irish and you know, there's a lot of countries out there that still use it and you know agencies and police organizations but I, I don't really see it as being an old rifle it is proven even though it was made in the uh, 70s it is proven to be an amazingly modular system that has been able to keep up with the test of time it may not be the most well balanced rifle but you know, I think that it is an incredible rifle, and when we're talking about rifle balance, I mean, all these favorite ARs are not actually balanced, but, you know, it's not balanced around the, the pistol grip, but you can shoot this one-handed because the balance point is a little bit more to the rear and gives the, the grip almost no weight to it. So it's really easy to shoot one-handed if you wanted to, but generally it's more maneuverable. Why would you get an SBR when you have something that, you know, has a full-length barrel, and even if it had a 20-inch barrel, it would still be shorter than an M4 at a desired, you know, stock length. And I know a lot of arguments are like, well, when the stock is compressed, it's shorter. Uh, yeah, but how many of you are actually going to shoot a rifle with a compressed stock and again 556 ballistic terminal performance and its reliability is severely degraded as you go down in barrel length you need that velocity in order to get good terminal performance that's going to do the most damage so with that that's my you know review on the Steyr AUG and those are really my arguments for a review you know it's done great. I haven't had a parts failure. The wear is incredibly low and I'll roll in some pictures of that but I just wanted to get out of the way a lot of the problems a lot of people come up with and imagine and turn it into a fantasy of why they don't think the system is reliable when in fact it has been proven to be reliable, incredibly modular and still very relevant to this day. Hope you all enjoyed this and here's the pictures.